Good morning, friends. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. It's Angela with Wild Violets Art. I have um, a really beautiful scrapbook kit that I'm going to use for cards as well. But um, this is an unusual kit. As I've mentioned before, Stampin' Up! purchased Close to My Heart. And it was a scrapbook exclusive. Um, they did some cards, but mostly scrapbooking. And they had a, what they called makers instead of demonstrators. And a lot of their makers came under Stampin' Up! because they promised to create scrapbooks, kits, um, similar to what they used to purchase through Close to My Heart. There's some color differences and stuff like that, but they've got some kits that, or at least one individual that um, didn't sell out, and I was happy to grab it. It's still available, and it's called The Secret Garden. Now, I know you guys know that I love gardening. I love flowers, and so I couldn't pass up on this really beautiful kit. So it's still available, even though it's got all of the Close to My Heart logos on it. Um, you know, I think I can make it work. So there's just some things that I'll have to work on to make it uh, convert to Stampin' Up! colors. But um, it was so beautiful, I couldn't pass it up. And I really wanted to see what their kits look like. Because from what I understand, Stampin' Up! is going to try really hard to emulate that to some degree in their kits going forward. Now, they already have some kits out that are holiday related. They have two Christmas kits scrapbook kits. They have um, a fall kit and a Halloween kit. So you'll have to check those out as well. But if you really love flowers like myself, then Close to My Heart's um, Secret Garden, which when they purchased Close to My Heart, they purchased all their merchandise as well for the, for the teams that were coming under. So, all right, let's get to it. So this really beautiful kit, um, they have it in a Ziploc. And it's called a scrapbooking workshop. And what it does is it will create um, six 12 by 12 layouts or three um, two page layouts. So what they include is all the cardstock that you're going to need. And they've got some really pretty cardstock here. And um, I believe this is some of their two-toned cardstock. So there's only one of each, so it's kind of hard for me to show you. But if you take a look at it here, let me uh, scoot this over so you can see this better. Sorry. Okay. So you can see this is two-tone cardstock. And Stampin' Up! just started just, um, selling two-toned two cardstock as well. And I think it's just stunning. And I love that there's two different colors of the one. So, um, so that's their base cards um, or designer series paper. And then we've got the coordinating card stock. I like that they have all these Ziplocs. I like Ziplocs much better than the sticky stuff. So these are... So it looks like it's the same pattern, just different colors. And um, so you can get an idea of what this looks like. And I like that this is just a really easy pattern to not overwhelm anything. And some of these colors will look familiar. Like this is um, much like the evening evergreen that we had. I think this is very close to somewhere between Pool Party and Lost Lagoon. This is a periwinkle color um, that they have. And this one right here is really close to Pretty in Pink. It's a little bit more peachy than ours, but um, it's a really close, close color. And then I couldn't find the one that was close to this, but... <clears throat> So if you have any of those retired colors, then you'll have um, the ability to, to stamp it and have it be really close. Okay, so here is um, their stamp set, and they have a st set of thinlets that go with it. 
So as you can see, we've got all these different um, stamps and they have theirs um, much like um, they had with some of our paper pumpkin where they printed on the on the white acetate. So they have theirs um, a little bit different than ours. And then they have, of course, the thinlets, they call them instead of dies. And these um, cut out the images here. So it doesn't, they don't have anything for the sentiments, but they have them for the flowers. And then these are some buildable um, dies as well that create some really beautiful florals. So we'll uh, play with that a little bit today. And then they include um, some really pretty embellishments. So you can get an idea of some of these colors. So it's really pretty. And I love this periwinkle color and I really, really, really wish that Stampin' Up! had that. I keep asking for periwinkle. The closest we have right now, um, you know, is a cross between the Highland Heather and um, maybe a little bit of a blue mixed in. So. One of the things that Stampin' Up! is going to do as well, they haven't done um, previously, is allow you to put placeholders, photo placeholders in your scrapbook page so that once you've done it, then you all you have to do is find photos that are similar to size. So they have three by four and four by six. Now I usually work with three and a half um, by five because that's the um, size that I get from a family album that I use with the grandkids. But I can print them, um, some of the ones that I have at four by six, and I can print them down to three by four. So these are just really cool, just something that would easily um, help you with your scrapbook layout. But you can convert, I think, any of your scrapbooks to a different photo size if you work with something different like I do. So one of the things I was super excited about was this color step-by-step um, -step brochure, which I'm really happy with because it gives you all the details of how to cut each one of the cardstocks. And then they show you what the images, the scrapbook page is supposed to look like, and then dimensions to show you kind of where things are supposed to be placed so that you can duplicate it just like they have it. Now, if you're a little independent, you can go with whatever you want. You don't have to follow what they have. All right. And then here are, these are stickers, which are just beautiful. And I love that they have the these really pretty um, titles and, you know, just really pretty little sentiments, places to journal. Um, that you can add as well. So just gorgeous. I love these. It's really, really pretty, pretty floral. Okay. And then this is some of their, I'm losing all the, the bags. Okay. So this is some of their designer series paper. And I think that Oh, here we go. So they have like this little piece on top that actually gets cut off, but you can use the other side as an embellishment. I think that was really clever of them. So let's just go through these papers. Just really beautiful. So this is the other side of this one. So pretty. So they've chosen to do um, two separate colors on each side with the same pattern, which is unique. I love how soft the colors are. It's just so pretty. So I'm excited to put these scrapbook pages together. And I think they're going to be really lovely. 
so you have here just all this different um, same pattern but different colors so you can accomplish what you need to so really lovely okay so typically um, you know you'd need adhesive and scissors a cutter to create these and then of course your stamp pads and um, so I'm going to use the evening evergreen um, pool party daffodil delight lost lagoon because I think there's these are all close colors and pretty in pink and then for the daffodil or for the um, periwinkle I think that this orchid oasis if I stamp off and not use it exactly it'll be really close to that color so if you have these retired in colors then it gives you an opportunity this one poor thing I just realized that in my move from California, it was in my retired stuff before I moved, something else has leaked all over it and created a huge mess. So that's going to be fun to clean up. I tried to clean it up before this video, but it didn't quite get done in time. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to be doing is doing some cutting. Now, it gives you each one of the card stocks, and it shows you um, the front and then it shows you the back and then next to the number it has a star or not and the star will tell you um, whether you're cutting for the back or the front and it just shows you the most efficient way to cut out all of the different sheets now as you can see all of this area in white is going to be your leftover and i'm thinking i've got lots of opportunity to make some really beautiful um, cards or I can continue on with the scrapbook pages and make more things. So you can see there's just lots of area of the cardstock. And so then when you get to your page, it shows you um, like when you're assembling how to prepare and then it shows you what you need. And these right here are um, 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 1E, 1F. Those you'll find back on these pages. So anything with a 1, I know is going to go in my first page. So 1A, 1J, I'm going to need 1A for this one, 1J for this one. So you can see what I'm doing there. And um, really, really pretty. So also Stampin' Up! has on their website pictures, these pictures of the scrapbook pages in, um, in the website. So you can have a prettier picture or a more, a bolder picture if that's what you're needing to see all the details in these pages. So, okay. So the first one I'm gonna need to do is, I'm gonna need some of these card stocks. So, so I'm going to need this one. And this one. This one. And like I said, I have the photos of them as well. So um, I can take a look at them a little closer to make sure that I've got it right. And let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, and I'm going to need this one, and this one. So these look like the... <clears throat> me the colors that I need 
for my first two pages of scrapbook. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to duplicate this one here so you can see that. And then back here, it's going to give me the, the measurements that I need for it. And these strips that I need to make from here are one and three quarter by 11. And if I just go through it, one and three quarter by 11 for all of them. So, so one of the things that I think is interesting is that, um, that we have this little strip on the top. So I'm going to need to cut that off first in order for me to cut the rest of it. I haven't worked with scrapbook paper like this. Um, I used to work with the kind in um, the big, um, it's like a booklet or, or tablet. Okay, so I need two of them because I'm going to need one for each scrapbook page. I might as well just cut them at the same time. One and three quarters. And then I need to cut them down to 11. I've done this beforehand, but I really wanted to show you what it is that I'm doing. So this video may take a little bit longer than normal. Hey, Linda, thanks for joining me. Hey, Debbie. Um, yeah, I th I've seen some people use them for cards and I think I'm gonna have lots of scraps left over that I can use for cards as well, which I'm very excited for. So these are just really so lovely. Um, there's no way that I'm gonna let those scraps just die on the shelf so so this tells me it's the top so I'm going to cut this little bit off again and I'm just going to save these because they're just really pretty and they can be used for whatever I need them to be okay again I'm going to need two of these I have so much junk on my desk, it's hard to get my paper straight. I shouldn't call it junk, it's all beautiful stuff. So I'm just going to cut these both at the same time so that they're 11 inches long. I already have inky fingers this morning from trying to clean off that one scrapbook or that one uh, ink pad. Okay, so these two, and then I love this. It's really cute. Having me cut them up and down. Actually, I was supposed to be cutting it sideways. So it's too late for both of these. Hmm. 
So there was one little note that said cut orientation, and I just realized that I cut it the wrong way. So that's a bummer. Okay, so maybe I need to start paying attention to cut orientation. Okay, so this one, it wants me to cut it up and down this way. So let's cut off this top piece. All right, so this one I am supposed to cut this way. Okay. It's easy because all of these pieces are just the one and three quarter by 11. I need to, again, cut these down to 11 inches. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here on my. And these two as well need to be cut. Down to 11. I need. This one and the cut orientation is this start putting together the first page. All right, so they have a cardstock that is called, um, I think it's French vanilla. So it's just a really nice warm white. And what I need to do is I need to place these. Of course, I'm just doing one each. And I'm just going to use the same boundary or border, the same dimension. And then I don't need these yet. Then they're going to be about an eighth of an inch apart. And then it looks like I missed one page. Um, oh, actually, I have to use both sides of this one. So I'm going to need to cut some more. <clears throat> and then this one. And it's too bad my roses are sideways. Read the instructions more thoroughly, Angela. Then this one. I thought I got this right, but it says I didn't. And then this one. So I didn't cut any of them the right way except for this. Okay. Lesson learned. I think they'll still be pretty. What do you think? <laughs> and I can always have it run up and down. I don't have to do it sideways. That's the nice thing about having a background like this. So then um, what I need are the pieces that are going to be for my photos. And it looks like they had Three photos here with some more cardstock and IG. Let's see, one G. Okay. 
Okay, so three and a half by four and a half to go under these. So it's going to be a half an inch bigger than each one of these. Um, just make sure I've got this right. Well, these are going to have, okay. So this is the cardstock that I need. And they want me to cut it at three and one quarter. So actually it's going to be three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I didn't do it right. Should have got four and a quarter wide. have some spare so four and three quarters under this that I'm going to cut off a three and a quarter piece I can see the benefit of cutting it all at once so that you get all the pieces that you need. Okay. So back to this scrapbook page that I'm already changing it up from directions. So behind each one of these is this little green polka dot paper. Normally I'm just trying to come up with this stuff in my head so it's really nice having somebody that's already done the hard work for me and figured out what the scrapbook page is going to look like. And I can change it up as I go if I like something a little bit better. Okay, so back to our scrapbook page. So I need, looks like I need to stamp. And I'll be using a sticker. So the sticker that I'll be using looks like this one right here. So rather than take it out and stick it down because I'm going to need to do some adhering for all of these, I'm just going to cut this out and cut around it because there's nothing on the back. And I can just place this here so that I can remember. And then the sentiment, you and me, is supposed to go down below with more flowers. So now they want me to stamp some items. So I'm going to use some of this very vanilla. And I'm going to take a look at the instructions for the stamping that they want me to do. Okay, so going back to all right. So according to my This one. This one. And I'm going to 
going to need this one, which is it's this right here, the leaf with berries and this one. Looks like I'm going to need a couple of these leaves and these berries and and it looks like I'm going to need another one of the flowers so I want to say it's this one right here that will go down below. Then you and me and then loving this. Um, so I'm looking for Loving This, which is here. And it looks like it's been layered on top of this. So it's just a sticker. And I can just layer it like this. And then I can use the sticker as well. If I had everything ready to go, I could just take the stickers out, but I kind of want to make sure that I like the layout when I'm done. And This goes here and this goes here with a bunch of stamped flowers. Okay, so let's get back to the stamping. So these flowers and these stamps are very similar to what Stampin' Up! does. So I don't think there's um, too much difference, but I want to say that just the feel of them, um, Stampin' Ups are a little bit more substantial, but I could be wrong. Okay, so it looks like some of these things get stamped in what I'm going to say is evening evergreen. It's a close color to this. Oh my goodness, this is just so messy. Thought I'd clean most of it up, but it looks like there's just tons more of another color that bled all over the ink pad, or at least around the edges of it. It doesn't look like it got on the ink pad itself, so it's just a mess. Goodness. Sure, where all the ink is coming from. Okay, more inky fingers. Okay, so let's do some foliage. So it looks like I'm going to need just one of these. And Oh, 
one of these. And remember, we have dies for all of these things, so we don't have to fussy cut anything. Um, could be wrong, but I think I only need one of these leaves. There's one on each side, from what I can tell. And then one of these little sprigs. Ugh. I have to work on that one some to get that to go away. And then it looks like we're supposed to use the yellow. pretty. And I think these would make really beautiful cards as well. And I think there's one more that they want me to do in yellow, but I'm looking at it and I'm not a fan. So I think I'm going to do, let's see, another one of the smaller. So you can make it any way you want to. You can follow the instructions exactly. Okay, so we're going to use these dies here. And I'm thinking that I can easily use my mini I think it's cool that they already add, have these on um, a magma sheet. So you don't even have to buy one, but I've been buying them for a while now. So these flowers down here. There's one more thing that was in the stamps. Did I miss it? Yep, one more item. Make sure I have plenty of this cardstock left over because I don't have any more like it. And so I'm being really careful and conservative how I how I stamp these. And hopefully I've given myself plenty of room to die cut them, but um, I can always fussy cut around if I if I need to. Okay, so that's all the little dies. And I'm just going to cut out these pieces so that they'll fit in my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine.
you know the layers for this. The one plate and then the two plate. I'm going to stagger them so they go in nicely. But before that, I should get my dies in place. And I'm going to actually tape them in place so that I don't have a hard time getting them to stay. And let's see. say that they go around the image pretty well, not as tight as Stampin' Up! does. So I think Stampin' Up! does a better job of getting their dies a little closer to their images so there's not as much white space around, if you know what I mean. this through. We can do the rest of it. Looks like they die cut nicely. Really pretty flowers. All right, so now I can die cut the rest of them. Right. And it looks like I'm not going to get some of them cut because they fell off. So I'll have to do that a second time.
try to do a little too much in the fell swoop. So we'll just send these through again. That's why the tape is nice is to keep them where they were originally cut in half. And so this one's the last one. So now we can assemble we have the last item cut. So these flowers, I believe, are just background. To these and this flower goes up here along with this little bud and this leaf goes here this one goes here and then this little, it's really pretty. And then of course you and me goes over the top of it and looks like I need one more of these little sprigs. Okay, but I can take care of that later. Let's go ahead and just have some fun and assemble so you can see the pretty product. And then that's all we're gonna do today. Um, I'll show you more pages online once I get it done. And, um, but you could see that it's not that hard. It gives you the design layout already. And then all you have to do is just assemble. So, and remember these go in page protectors. So I'm going to, um, just use one strip each. And when you're starting your first one, I want my three borders to be the same. So I'm making sure that my left, right, and bottom are pretty close to the same. And once I feel comfortable with that, then I can start adding the next piece and they'll be about an eighth of an inch apart. So let's try to get them right about where I want them to make sure that we have room for all of them. I think that's perfect right there. So we'll just add the tear and tape for each strip. Try not to tape my <laughs> the cord off of my my blouse and isn't it funny my blouse I don't know if you can see it or not um, let me just uh, put it over is pretty much the same pattern I mean it's got like the same colors and I didn't do that on purpose <laughs> it's pretty funny so <laughs> I feel all matchy matchy with my scrapbook page which is hilarious all to face the same direction because I am going to be putting it up and down if you recall because I had an oops on all my cuts all but one <laughs> and the one that's fine it'll it works just like works fine As you guys got to learn from me if you happen to be getting this beautiful scrapbook kit it's just so pretty
It's really just lovely. So this is the one that I'm going to make sure that my borders on all three sides are close to the same. And I'm making sure that everything lines up. And then I have my last piece. Did I put this one upside down? Oh my goodness. Oh no. Okay. All right. Scared myself. All right, and then we have the photo placeholders. I'm thinking just a little bit over the edge is pretty. Okay, so Just place this before I do anything further because once it's down I'm not sure that it's gonna be able to handle and then this pretty little sentiment goes right next to it and I think that the flowers overlap it just a little bit. And then down below, I'm going to just arrange it just slightly different. Actually, as this little sprig is being covered up by the florals, I'm going to just cut this off and use it for the other side instead of printing out another one. Or because this one covers up everything. And I can use this little sprig here along with this leaf and no one's going to know. Well, no one's going to know anyway. And then this. So really pretty. I'm really happy with this. And I don't know if you can tell, but it's just got such a pretty look to it. So, um, and I think that works just fine. There's some beautiful dyes 
that go with it um, that make some really pretty cards as well. And I'll do this on Monday. So we'll go through and we'll create these card uh, a card with this um, for Monday because I want you to see how pretty the stackable florals are. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I'm glad you were able to be here. If you're watching this later um, on YouTube, please click subscribe and like and share with a friend. As I continue to build my business, I appreciate it every time someone loves one of my um videos or um, likes it on YouTube. So thanks so much and have a great weekend. We'll talk soon. Bye.